Hello. Welcome. I'm Emily, and today we're going to be doing permutations and combinations from the beginning. If you already feel pretty comfortable with them, this might not be the video for you, but if counting is just hurting all your brain cells all at once, this is hopefully going to help. Uh, and so I guess we better get started. Um, we're going to be specifically looking at how those formulas for permutations and combinations work together. Um, and this is really going to help us with the building blocks that we're going to use for every counting problem we do for like the next three weeks. <laughs> Deep breath. It, it'll be okay. Um, we're in counting for a while, but we're going to get through it. Starting now. What color do we want? Not red. I don't like that color. Um, I'm feeling very orange. Okay. We're going to look at this problem of seven My Little Ponies. They're pretty cute over here. And we want to give three of them a first place, a second place, and a third place prize. Take a sec. Think about how we can do that. I'm thinking about that these are three tasks. We have to assign a first place. Wow, what did I do? I hit the wrong button. Ignore me. Anyway, we have to assign a first place task, a second place, and a third place task. Notice I said and between all of those. Pretty good indication of product rule. Now we need to look at the number of ways to do each task. The number of ways to do the first one is seven. We could give any of the seven ponies first place. The number of ways to do the second is six because there's only six left after we gave one of them first place. And then five. Seven times six times five. Cool, cool. Now let's go talk about how that's a permutation. <laughs> Permutations are counting things with order. That's a word you've probably heard way too much and you're sick of, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but we care about the order of these ponies. We care about, you know, pony A versus pony B versus pony C is different than B, A, C. So we need a permutation uh, where we have seven options and we're counting the ordering of three of them. And now we can write it out in this fancy factorial format that is written up above, but I almost actually never write out permutations like this. It's really hard for me to look at that and remember what it's counting, but we have this really nice, great way of writing this problem out on the last slide. And that was just seven times six times five. And that actually is hiding in this formula, just with like some extra stuff around it. And when I do permutations, I almost always write them out. Um, that's just me. If this P stuff works for you, fantastic. But I like being able to look at something like nine permute two and, and feeling what that means really fast. And I just can't. Um, but when I write out nine times eight, that feels a lot better. Task one has nine options, test two has eight. Doing both of them, I care about order. Check mark. Okay. Enough on permutations. Guess what we're moving to now? Shocker, surprise, combinations. Now we're awarding the same prize. So A, B, C is the same as B, A, C. We need to count them the same. Um, sometimes what I draw this out as is counting the number of different boxes of ponies I could have. I was going to store three of these ponies in a box and like put it in the top of my closet. How many different boxes could I have? And I could have A, B, C. I could have A, E, F, um, dot, dot, dot. And this we call seven choose three. I do use this notation for seven choose three, not the factorial. Um, yeah, this is probably gonna be commonly used. I would suggest it. Um, in the permutation symbols commonly used, I, that's really just a me thing that I don't like it. <laughs> My brain is not a fan. <laughs> okay, ignore that. Seven choose three. 
Now the formula for this is 7 factorial over 3 factorial times 4 factorial. And let's say I now tell you we're going to count the same thing we did before, where we cared about first, second, third place prize, but you have to use a combination to do it. You have to. Where could we start with that? A combination, but we care about order. We just want to do 7 times 6 times 5. Uh, done. I'll even write this out this way. Um, but if we are forced to use a combination, let's think about the steps involved in this. I need to get three ponies out of the 7. Okay, so combination is going to give me a box. And I have three ponies. And I get that with 7 choose 3. Let's remember what 7 choose 3 equals. 7 factorial over 3 factorial, 4 factorial. We want these two numbers to be equal right now. So just algebraically, what do we need to do? Well, we need to multiply by 3 factorial. Okay. Why? Well, let's look. 7 choose 3 counted this box, A, B, and C. But do we just want to count this box once for a permutation where we care about order? No. There are many times we want to count this. Let's think about them. We care about A, B, C versus A, C, B. So at least two times. We also care about B, A, C versus B, C, A. And you might see where this is going. We didn't count, we counted all of these as one, but really there's a lot more. How many more? It's actually more than four. We could write out the other two, but I'm gonna say there's six. And I got that from solving a different problem. I said, how many ways are there to order A, B, and C? We're back to product rule. We really come back to this a lot. Three ways for first place, two ways for second, one for third. So remember, we, we got our box of three ponies. That came from the seven choose three. We just need to put them in order. So three factorial. And now we notice that even though we did it in steps, we counted the same thing as the seven times six times five. We just did get a box. That is not a box. I don't know what happened there. And then we ordered the box. This rhythm gets done all the time in counting problems. Do one thing, do the, and then do something else to get to the count you want. Uh, we also can think about this the other way. Think about starting with the permutation and how can we change that into a combination. But I'll leave that for you. Um, I hope this was helpful for some people and it was good review if this was stuff you felt good about. Again, stay tuned for another counting video that kind of deals with how we take the tools in this and start building up more complex problems. Um, a thing I really do want to emphasize about counting, though, is we can try to count as many hard problems in the world as we want, but if we're not too sure about how to count some of the simpler problems, it's not going to be helpful to try to count the hard ones. Counting really builds and doing a lot of practice smaller ones is really important. I highly recommend just like sitting down and going through the problems in Rosen. Um, FYI, you can Google basically any problem in Rosen to get an answer. So that's a really good quick way to get a feel for counting. Okay, this video is too long probably. I'm sorry, I'm done. Okay, bye. Oh, wait, I'm not done. I always do this. Stop share. Now stop recording. Stop. No, no, no. Stop. Yes. Okay. Now bye.